Item number, SCP-247. Object class, Euclid. Special Containment Procedures. SCP-247 is kept in an enclosure of at least 20 by 40 meters, furnished based on the plans provided by the zoo, and lined with SCP-148 offset from the rest of site by at least 50 meters, in order to mitigate its psychic effect. As per current containment procedures for SCP-148, its use in the containment of other SCPs is to be avoided if at all possible. O5 SCP-247 is to be fed 18 kilograms of fresh meat on a tri-weekly basis. Feeding occurs in a separate enclosure. Cleaning staff should enter the enclosure only during designated feeding times. No other access to the enclosure is allowed. The footage resulting from any violation of this order is to be archived, for use in training the cleaning and monitoring staff of SCP-247. In case of a containment breach, the entire wing must be evacuated, and all live footage of the incident heavily censored. The area SCP-247 occupies will be sealed off and gassed, followed by the return of SCP-247 to containment. If, for any reason, this should become impossible, a retrieval team will be sent in armed with heavy tranquilizer rifles. Retrieval team agents must be specially selected for high reflexes, excellent marksmanship, unquestioning obedience, and low empathy scores. Description SCP-247 is a Bengal tiger, Panthera tigris tigris, adult female, which, to all observers, appears to be a harmless cat, Felis catus, juvenile female, with an orange and black striped coat resembling that of a tiger. Remote feeds and still photos also show this illusion, although it is unknown whether the photo itself is affected or merely the observer. SCP-247's true nature has been confirmed by analysis of weight, water displacement, and dental molds made from bite marks. It is unknown exactly how SCP-247 generates this illusion. There are two components to the illusion. First, a mimetic effect that changes the perceived image of SCP-247 to that of a kitten, and second, a psychic component which radiates outward from the subject, diminishing according to the inverse square law, and reaching half strength at meters. Any sentient being within this field comes under the impression that SCP-247 is completely harmless, regardless of prior knowledge or experience. Individuals in this field also show extreme reluctance to harm or allow others to harm SCP-247, even while being actively harmed by the subject. This psychic field can be blocked with SCP-148, or avoided by striking from well outside its effective range. The mimetic effect is not blocked by SCP-148. As of yet, no one has been able to see SCP-247 as anything but a small striped cat. Typically, SCP-247 will begin to purr or mew when approached by a human. The human will remark that this is adorable, and approach to pet the subject. This has been observed even in persons who strongly dislike cats. SCP-247 has been known to accept affection from its victims for upwards of seven minutes before disemboweling and devouring them. Genetic analysis shows slight deviation from a typical Bengal tiger's genotype indicating possible contamination data expunged. All further breeding experiments require O5 level approval. The resulting hybrids have been designated SCP-2471. Addendum 247-A A series of tests in exposing SCP-247 and the control subjects to various non-human animals. Control testing took place in an exact replica of SCP-247's enclosure. Control A is a yellow kitten, matching SCP-247's apparent size and age. Control B is a fully grown Bengal tiger, matching SCP-247's actual weight. Experiment Log 247A1 Date 2010 Test Subject A mixed breed dog, mostly terrier. A known cat chaser. Control Test A Subject immediately began barking and ran at the control, which retreated up a nearby tree. Control Test B 
Subject cowered in the corner as far from the control as possible. Control took no notice of subject. Results. Subject ran toward SCP-247, barking loudly. At approximately five meters away, subject slowed to a halt and became silent. At this point, SCP-247 rolled over and made a mewing sound believed to be a sign of annoyance. The subject retreated to a far corner of the enclosure with its tail between its legs. Notes. That was extremely odd. Further testing recommended. Researcher S. Approved. O5. Experiment Log 247A02II. Date 2010. Test Subject A male tabby kitten with the same apparent age as SCP 247. Control Test A. Subject played with the control in the manner expected of kittens. Control Test B. Subject climbed a tree and attempted to hide itself from the control displaying visible signs of terror. Results. Test 1. Subject approached SCP-247 and mewed. SCP-247 responded in kind and played with the tabby kitten. The resulting footage is extremely odd. At one point, SCP-247 lifts the subject, which appears to be the same size as SCP-247, with a single forepaw, while at another point, SCP-247 lifts the subject with its mouth, clearly showing that its mouth is much larger than it appears to be. The leading researcher characterized this as adorable, but remarked that it gave him a headache. Due to a faulty recorder, this test had to be repeated. Results Test 2 Subject approached SCP-247 as above. SCP-247 made a deep purring sound analogous to a growl. Subject reacted as in Control Test B. Notes. This seems to indicate 247 has some degree of conscious control over its apparent appearance. Researcher S. Experiment Log 247A-3. Date. 2010. Test Subject. An adult male deer, a normal prey animal for a Bengal tiger. Control B and SCP-247 were not fed for three days prior to this experiment. Control Test A. Subject grazed. Control fell asleep two minutes into the experiment. Control Test B. Control attacked, killed, and devoured subject, which behaved normally for a deer trapped in an enclosed space with a large predator. Results. Subject began grazing as in Control Test A. SCP-247 approached it calmly and killed it with a single bite to the neck, then proceeded to devour the subject. Test was repeated without SCP-247 being forced to fast. SCP-247 completely ignored the subject for over a day before apparently becoming hungry and killing it, again with a single bite to the neck. Notes: SCP-247 seems to prefer humans both as food and for entertainment. Other prey animals presented to SCP-247 were all killed in a single strike, while humans are invariably allowed to pet the SCP for some time before being killed, and are sometimes mauled and played with the way a cat will play with a mouse. Furthermore, the SCP has killed every human it has had the opportunity to kill, regardless of hunger. Researcher S. Experiment Log 247A8 Date 2010 Test Subject An Adult Female Chimpanzee Control Test A Subject and Control ignored one another. Control Test B Subject retreated to a tree, showing some signs of unease. Control displayed some curiosity towards the subject, but did not attack. Results Subject approached SCP-247, made noises identified as signs of affection, and began to groom SCP-247. SCP-247 allowed the subject to groom it for over an hour, then messily killed and devoured it. Notes: This seems to be its typical reaction to unfamiliar prey animals. 
It seems to prefer to prey on apes with advanced social behavior. Experiments with gorillas and other social apes have shown similar results. Essentially, SCP-247 is a large predator that has somehow adapted to take advantage of the largest available food source, humans. We should investigate all future reports of man-eating tigers in case there are more of these things. Researcher S. Experiment Log 247A-12 Date 2010 Test Subject An adult female grizzly bear Control Test A Control fled up a tree in terror. Subject ignored it. Control Test B Subject and Control acted nervously and gave one another as large a berth as possible. Results Initially, Subject and SCP-247 ignored one another. At one point, Subject came very close to SCP-247, resulting in SCP-247 giving a warning growl. Subject responded with hostility. Test aborted due to possible harm to SCP-247. Subject tranquilized by Foundation personnel and subsequently killed by SCP-247. Notes Future tests involving animals potentially capable of killing or injuring a Bengal tiger are cancelled. Researcher S. Experiment Log 247A13 Date 2010 Test Subject An Adult Female Bengal Tiger Control Test A Control fled up a tree in terror. Subject ignored it. Control Test B Subject and Control greeted one another, established the order of social dominance, then both fell asleep. Results Identical to Control Test B Notes Interestingly, SCP-247 was the beta animal in this interaction. Researcher S. Experiment Log 247A-14 Date 2010 Test Subject An Adult Male Bengal Tiger Control Test A Control fled up a tree in terror. Subject ignored it. Control Test B Omitted Record of normal Bengal tiger mating behavior substituted. Results As expected based on Control B. Data expunged. Notes Researcher S has been removed from this project for lax security in his experiments. Although, in light of his injuries, further disciplinary measures have been deemed unnecessary. Data expunged, which seems to have benefited from a form of hybrid vigor has been designated SCP-2471. Considering that SCP-247 is likely to have bred naturally in the wild, Mobile Task Force IOTA-5, Tiger Bait, has been formed and assigned to hunt down and contain or destroy all incidences of the hybrid SCP-2471. 05 Item Number SCP-331 Object Class Safe. Special Containment Procedures When not being used, SCP-331 is to be kept within a typical electronic 7-digit metal safe in Dr. Rand's office. The code is to be changed on a monthly basis by said doctor. Personnel who wish to examine SCP-331 must ask for authorization beforehand. As of date undisclosed, SCP-331 is worn by SCP-331-1. Description SCP-331 is a red plastic cat collar, approximately 23 centimeters in length. Metal studs surround the collar in intervals of 1 centimeter. Testing has confirmed the metal to be nickel. The bell consists of stainless steel, electroplated with 24 karat gold. Ringing the bell has no distinguishable effect, adverse or otherwise. The word tumbles has been painted on the back of the collar in yellow paint. Testing has confirmed that there is nothing unusual about the paint. SCP-331 exhibits no abnormal tendencies when worn by a living cat. When SCP-331 is fastened around the neck of a deceased cat, hereafter SCP-331-1, SCP-331-1 is resurrected with no initial adverse effects. 
The collar does not halt the decomposition process, however. Fur and skin still rot at a regular pace. Organs are unaffected by the decomposition process. Testing has yet to determine the exact cause for this. SCP-3311 shows no signs of distress during the decomposition process. SCP-3311 can be killed by conventional methods, whereupon it remains deceased. The separation of SCP-331 and SCP-3311 data expunged. Unless SCP-3311 is deceased, it should be noted that SCP-3311 always answers to tumbles and has an amiable personality, despite what it was called or how it behaved pre-mortem. SCP-331 was discovered when reports reached a Foundation agent of a zombie cat witnessed around park. Said agent immediately alerted the Foundation of a possible outbreak of SCP-8. MTF was dispatched and neutralized SCP-3311, whereupon it was transported to site after no trace of SCP-8 was detected. Upon arrival, research was conducted on SCP-331 that confirmed its properties. Item Number SCP-511 Object Class Euclid Special Containment Procedures When an instance of SCP-511 is identified, the affected residents shall be quarantined and will receive the next sequential site designation. Accepting one main entrance, sites hosting SCP-511 will have all points of possible entry or exit permanently sealed with appropriate building materials. The main entrance will remain locked at all times. Entry is permitted to Foundation personnel with written authorization from Level 3 or higher. All SCP-511 sites will be equipped with remote monitoring equipment allowing for 24-hour surveillance and a continual tracking of the numbers of SCP-511-1 inhabiting the site. At all times, one Class D personnel will be resident in the site. Personnel with this assignment are exempted from monthly termination for the duration of assignment. Candidates for this assignment shall be exclusively drawn from a population of postmenopausal women with a global clinical dementia rating of 2 or greater. Note, due to the exclusive nature of this population, O5 has approved recruiting from local hospice and or nursing homes if necessary. The population of SCP-511-1 within a site must remain within an optimal range of 50 to individuals. Below this range, Adult Felis Domesticus should be introduced to the site to increase population to minimum levels. If population exceeds individuals, it must be culled immediately. Any SCP-511-1 found outside the containment site shall be euthanized and the remains incinerated. Any biological material leaving the containment site for testing will be handled in accordance with standard protocols for a level 4 biohazard. All specimens are incinerated after testing is complete. Before coming in contact with any material from the containment site, personnel must be inoculated for influenza, hepatitis A, hepatitis B, tetanus, tick-borne, and encephalitis. Full medical workups are mandatory on a bi-weekly basis for personnel working with SCP-511. Description Instances of SCP-511 typically occur within residential structures with a block or stone foundation that includes a basement or crawl space. All attempts to remove an instance of SCP-511 from such a residence have proved ineffective. SCP-511 is always found associated with a colony of feral Felis domesticus, common domestic cats. Members of this colony are designated SCP-511-1. SCP-511 is a mass of biological matter, taking the form of a large feline, often with extra limbs, eyes, mouths, or other organs. It is typically coated with dirt, blood, and fecal matter, making its fur appear black despite its actual coloring. Tests have shown SCP-511's fur to actually be a random patchwork of various feline coat patterns, colors, and lengths. SCP-511's mass varies from 10 kilograms to over 50 kilograms, roughly in proportion to the number of SCP-511-1 in the associated colony. 
The tissue that makes up this mass consists primarily of the bodies of deceased SCP-511-1. The portion of SCP-511 that does not comprise SCP-511-1 consists of other biomass, small rodents, various plant materials, insects and insect larvae, black mold, a human data expunged. Incorporation of dead tissue into SCP-511 does not appear to slow the normal process of decay. Different areas of SCP-511 undergo different stages of biodegradation at any given time. Some areas show little more than lividity, while other areas may show active carrion insect infestation, and some areas may even show liquefaction of tissues. Note, researchers have described SCP-511 making a purring sound. Tests have shown this sound does not originate with SCP-511, but is actually the sound of insects, most often blowflies, trapped within its mass. Dr. A. SCP-511 prefers to inhabit dark spaces with a relatively high humidity, such as old basements and crawl spaces. It will continually scavenge its immediate area for new biomass to incorporate into itself, displacing and expelling matter that has decayed past mechanical usefulness. Examples of SCP-511-1 resemble ordinary Felis domesticus that have undergone extreme neglect. They display a body condition score of 2 or 1 regardless of the amount of food available. Ulcerated skin is common, as are parasitic infestations, tumors, and various viral and bacterial infections. SCP-511-1 are known carriers of a particularly virulent strain of A typical SCP-511-1 shows no interest in grooming itself, and has patchy and matted fur. It is unclear to what extent the physical condition of an SCP-511-1 is a result of the influence of SCP-511, and to what extent it is due to suboptimal living conditions. Several observations have been made of an SCP-511-1 retrieving biomass from elsewhere, and bringing it to SCP-511 to be incorporated. Addendum 1 Incident Report of Containment Breach at Site-511 Incident I-511-11 Personnel involved D-7856 Male subject, 35 years of age Date 0827 19 Location Site 511 California Description After determining that a permanent human presence at an SCP-511 site results in moderation of aggression in SCP-511-1, Containment protocol is updated to require Class D personnel reside on-site in the event the original homeowner is deceased. Six months after this policy is established, D-7856 is assigned to Site-511. As expected, within a week, aggression levels of SCP-511-1 toward Foundation personnel lessen considerably. Sixteen days after being assigned to Site-511, D-7856 begins showing signs of increased aggression, verbally abusing Foundation personnel and engaging in superficial vandalism of Site-511. D-7856 is reprimanded. Eighteen days into his assignment, D-7856 interferes with the Foundation team by throwing garbage and yelling obscenities. D-7856 is subdued with a tranquilizer dart and locked in his quarters. At 20 days, D-7856 begins capturing SCP-511-1, and data expunged is only discovered when a Foundation research team enters for routine specimen collection 48 hours later. The team discovers remains from 37 separate SCP-511-1 collected in the kitchen. Bodies are dismembered and show signs of data expunged. D-7856's body is discovered in the basement after an apparent attempt to data expunged. Site 511 is incinerated as an emergency containment procedure. Okay, I think there's something to the crazy cat lady idea. I think we need to be more careful with the Class Ds on this one. Dr. A. Addendum 2. Interview with Agent R. Survivor of containment breach at Site 51147. Interview 511A. Interviewed, Agent R. Interviewer, Dr. A. Forward, 
Agent R was sole survivor for Mobile Task Force, assigned to retrieve an SCP-511 for study from Site-51147 after the death of the homeowner, Mrs. B. Interview takes place at St. Hospital in Ohio. Begin log. 11.05.13.30 Dr. A. How are you feeling? Agent R. Ugh. Like I've had half my face ripped off. How do you think I feel? Dr. A. I want to talk about the containment breach. Agent R. Unintelligible. Dr. A. We have some questions. Agent R. Of course you do. Dr. A. Starting with, why was there foreign matter introduced into the containment unit? Agent R. Do you have any idea what we were dealing with? Dr. A. Why don't you tell me? Agent R. We were tasked to retrieve a 40 kilo thing with a BSL-4 containment unit. You know how big those units are? Dr. A. I know the specifications. Agent R. Like lugging a self-propelled washing machine. Now, imagine dragging one of those into one of these places. You already got reduced mobility from the hazmat suit, got 50 kilos of gear, and you're walking into a house that has two or three decades worth of garbage in it. We have cat ankle deep in places, trash bags split open, piles of soggy newspaper and junk mail, boxes of clothes, furniture that looked like it exploded, and cats everywhere. Eyes everywhere. Dr. A, can we return to the containment unit? Agent R, we have chest high in places, cats everywhere, and space is so tight that we have to go single file. No way a guy in full gear can turn around and forget the containment unit. Just one look and there's no way we can use Data expunged. Dr. A. So it was Agent B's idea. Agent R. It was that or pack it in. Can't get downstairs. So we bait the unit with the body and point it at the basement door. According to the briefing, it would be attracted to freshly dead biological matter. Dr. A. And SCP-511 was attracted to the baited unit. Agent R. The most nerve-wracking 20 minutes of my life, listening to that thing pull itself upstairs. Thud, thud, thud. And those cats watching us. You know how freaky cat eyes look with night vision equipment? Dr. A. So you captured SCP-511. Agent R. <laughs> Dr. A. What happened then? Agent R. We got out as quickly as we could. No one can turn around, so we back out, all those eyes watching us, staring. Dr. A. You were first out the door. Agent R. Last in, first out. We all got out, for all the good it did. We thought we'd pulled it off. But the moment the containment unit rolled out the door, it… they… Dr. A. What happened? Agent R. You ever see films of explosive decompression? That's what happened to it. Splattered itself all over the insides of the containment unit. And those cats, those f***ing awful cats, they howled. Then they rushed us. Dr. A. Did you attempt to contain the breach? Agent R. You're kidding, right? Two or three hundred of them. Not just the door, but the windows, dropping on us from the second floor. When I saw disappear under them, I just ran and locked myself in the van. I'm not proud of that. Dr. A. I'm not here to judge. I'm here to determine what happened, so it does not happen again. Agent R. Well, you see what happened to me? That was one of them that got locked in with me. One. If you don't reclassify these things, Keter, you're insane. Dr. A. I will be recommending updates to containment procedure. Agent R. Yeah, while you're updating things, there's something else you need to update. Dr. A. What's that? Agent R. The briefing? 
was all about how SCP-511 is influencing these cats. That's wrong. Dr. A. How so? Agent R. SCP-511 doesn't influence anything. It's the cats. They made SCP-511. And they made it because they hate us. End log. Closing statement. Agent R died three days later from complications due to blood poisoning. Three weeks after containment breach, a new incidence of SCP-511 was identified in Ohio, 35 kilometers southeast of Site-51147. Remote biopsies of this new incidence revealed genetic material identified as coming from three agents of Mobile Task Force It seems that the destruction of SCP-511 might only displace it elsewhere. Until we better understand the vectors that propagate it, all SCP-511 need to be contained in place. Request for reclassification of SCP-511 to Keter is denied. 05 Item Number SCP-529 Object Class Safe Special Containment Procedures No special precautions have yet proven necessary. Josie is quite affectionate and at this stage is free to move about the lower levels of the facility. Staff are not permitted to feed cheese to her. She will become distressed if not given sufficient cheese. Description SCP-529 is a small house cat, Felis catus, with gray tabby markings. Parts of the animal to the rear of the end of the ribcage appear to be missing. The body terminates sharply, as if sliced in two. In spite of this, the animal has no health problems, and moves about as if its hindquarters were still in place. For example, walking takes place as usual, and sometime after feeding, the animal makes motions, as if to void itself of waste matter. The cross-section does not display the interior of the animal, but appears pure black to the eye, and absorbs all non-visible wavelengths of light. It is slightly yielding to the touch, Gentle stroking of this area sometimes yields a positive reaction, purring and so on, but more usually leads to the creature turning on the agent. Claws at the ready. Those scratched have experienced no abnormalities. The hind regions do not appear to be invisible. A cursory examination will show that there are no hindquarters. DNA testing has shown the animal to be female. Lesson complete. To continue with your orientation training, subscribe to SCP Orientation right now and make sure you don't miss any of our upcoming videos.